What's up everyone, it's Cedric. Today we're going to be making beef wellington. Um, I don't know how it's going to go, hopefully it'll go well, fingers crossed. But I'm just going to give it my best shot. I think all of the footage will most likely be cinematic, so don't expect much commentary from me. Um, but I just hope you enjoy the process and see what the end result looks like. For this recipe, I decided to use a mixture of Joshua Weissman's Beef Wellington recipe and of course Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington recipe. Um, the only real difference is the mixing of chestnuts alongside the mushrooms. So what I did was um, decided to put in both elements of mushroom, chestnut, as well as shallot and garlic from Weissman uh, into the mushroom duck cell and you'll see that. So here I'm just chopping up the mushrooms. I didn't use the food processor um, because I thought that my food processor probably wouldn't work. So I manually chopped the shallots as well, um, as well as the garlic and chestnuts that you'll see in a moment. These chestnuts are actually the ones that you can just eat, um, like right straight from the packet, I mean, and they do taste really, really good. After using the amount required for the recipe, I kind of just had them as a snack, so they kind of served a, a dual purpose for me that day, which was pretty nice. For the duck cells itself, I started with a cold pan, some oil, and then added my shallots and garlic before adding in my mushroom. Make sure you dehydrate them all the way, by the way. I also added some whiskey as per Weissman's recipe. Um, but yeah, make sure you don't want any liquid, otherwise you get a soggy bottom. Season the beef tenderloin just with salt and pepper. I actually cut a bit out because it was um, too big, so I saved a bit of steak for myself before looking to sear it on the pan with just a bit of olive oil just to give it color on all sides before letting it cook in the oven. So the oven is going to be the one that's doing most of the work for the cooking. You just want a bit of color on your tenderloin before you wrap it up with all of the other ingredients. The next step which I found quite interesting was actually just to lather it with mustard. I did not have a pastry brush, otherwise I would be using it, but I decided to use one of these uh, spatula type looking things for cake, or frosting for cake I think. But make sure you cover it on all sides with mustard just to give it a bit of heat. I use English mustard, but I think Dijon mustard is also okay in this scenario. The wrapping process actually involved crepes as well, so we had to make a few crepes. I added in around 51 grams of flour, 50 grams of flour, um, and then some milk, I think 140 milliliters, 140 grams of milk effectively, and an egg. Whisked it all together, as you'll see in a moment, and then just using some butter on a pan, I tried to cover the pan surface as much as possible to get the crepe uh, going. So it's a very, very simple crepe recipe. I, I didn't even season my crepe. I think you're supposed to with a bit of salt, but I felt like it wasn't that important. So I didn't do that. And I just um, cooked the crepe as necessary to make the wrapping process a bit easier. As you'll see, it wasn't the most perfect flip um, for this crepe because I actually managed to damage it. But the, the other two crepes that I made, which were actually bigger, turned out to be the ones that I used. So I'm not sure why I kept that 
bit of footage. I guess I didn't record the other creeps, but laying them out, I had the Palmer ham on the bottom layer, as you can see. And then I managed to get my duck cells out um, to start putting it onto the rolling sheet effectively before adding uh, the beef later on. So make sure you kind of calculate how much duck cell you need. So it wraps around the whole Wellington which is what I did. Um, I put in an extra bit, but I think I ended up putting in too much. But here's the Wellington, uh, not the Wellington, the, the beef tenderloin, as I wrap it into it. As you can see, the Duxel will leak from the side because I put in too much, but alas, that is a part of the learning process as I made this for the first time um, that day. So yeah, ideally, maybe don't spread the Duxels too much on, on the sides um, so it doesn't leak out like that. You won't see, but I actually wrapped it in cling film. Actually, you can probably see in the background there. Um, wrapped it in cling film and put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes before getting my puff pastry and laddering it with a bit of uh, egg yolk wash. I then got the roll out, the baby out, and then started wrapping the puff pastry around it. Um, I think I left the puff pastry just a tad bit out too long because it started sticking to the baking sheet underneath, which was a bit of a shame. And also the wetness of the Duxel, like I mentioned before, made the process a bit more complicated. But seal both ends. If you want to keep it longer, you can just wrap it up in more cling film. But I decided to put it straight into the oven um, with a bit of egg yolk wash on top as well, alongside some salt. And I baked it for around 35 minutes at 210 degrees Celsius before pulling it out. It was really hot, by the way, as you can see, <laughs> my hands. Um, struggling there. I let it cool a bit on a rack before deciding to cut into it because um, Gordon Ramsay says to do that, so I trust him. Which meant that the pastry wasn't as puffy as, as it should be. I think I left it too long. But having a look at the inside, I was very, very, very happy. And you'll see my reaction in just a moment. Um, perfectly medium rare here. It's brilliant. Hi guys, I'm really chuffed actually because I managed to execute the Wellington. Um, not perfectly though because the bottom crust was a bit soggy and that's because I think I didn't take enough moisture out from the mushrooms and I think that's just something to learn for next time. But as you guys can probably see from the footage already, um, it's looking pretty good. It's medium rare like for the most of the fillet and it tastes pretty amazing itself. So I'm pretty happy about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching along and hopefully this gives you some inspiration on what to cook for future Christmases or just if you want to eat a beef wellington in general. Um, it's very, very decadent um, and probably one of the most complicated things I've ever made. And it did take a lot of time, but I think it was quite worth it. And hopefully you get some nice pictures for the Instagram. So thanks again for watching along. Um, and I hope you guys had a really wonderful Christmas if this is uploaded after Christmas or if you had a really great, or have a really good Christmas if this is uploaded before Christmas, which is unlikely, but if that's the case, whatever. Um, and have a great, happy new year as well. So appreciate again for watching the video and hope to see you guys very soon. Bye.